top of the morning to all of you. It's another frosty morning here in northern New York. I'm Brenda and I'm Jim's wife and here's Jim. And this morning we have quite a project going on. We are going to be heading down to the log landing where all the logs are that Jim logged out this winter. And we're gonna be bringing home quite a few loads, hopefully. We're gonna take two teams. Jim's ambition is to get two loads home before our coffee break this morning with the two teams and then two loads after the coffee break. That's if, that is if the weather stays cool and um, things don't get too muddy. Jim had hoped to get a load of basswood trucked, but he's decided he's gonna bring it all home instead. So that is what he's up to now. And um, I'm gonna be driving Lady and Ken, as you see here today. And Jim will be having Bill and Buck. They did some hauling yesterday. They brought home a couple loads yesterday. And um, everything went really well with that. But there's just a lot of hauling to do. Um, the other day, you might have, if you, if you um, missed it, Jim brought home some round bales as well. And he hooked three wagons together and made an 18-wheeler out of it. So um, there'll be a, a card up there if you missed that video. And you can go back and watch that. Okay, so actually, yesterday, it was three loads Jim brought up here. And here's his pile of basswood that he brought home. And then over here is a pile of some odds and ends. He's got a big hickory log. There's some beech, some ash. So he'll be sawing these out later this spring. But the important thing is to get them home while he can before the muddy, we call it mud season, hits us, which it inevitably will. It's already done that some as soon as the weather warms up. We're expecting a snowstorm tonight and tomorrow. So another reason why we wanna get all of this done this morning and early afternoon, hopefully, before things warm up too much. Jim's hooking up to the wagon right now. And this is the wagon he used the other day when we had the 18-wheeler situation, taking three wagons down to the lower farm. Um, there's still the round bales. One of the wagons, he, we had two, two loads of uh, round bales and a load of logs that he brought home that day. I forgot a hitch pin. Oh. Well, the other day you had a hitch pin off the other cart. Okay. The other day he had like three hitch pins on there. Oh. As you can see here, the ice is not very thick. No. 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 Yeah. So my team is ready, and then he's going to go and get uh, Bill and Buck ready to go. Well, Brenda and I both left at the same time, and you can see how much farther back she is than I am. Both teams were at their normal walk. One more indication of the difference between horses. That's also one reason why I like to swap them around because a lot of times when I work a slow horse with a fast horse, it kind of forces that slow horse to walk faster. 
So here we are at the field. We're gonna head down to those logs down there and get some logs. This is a big, heavy hickory log right here. Um, all my logs, different species, weigh differently, and hickory is must be one of the heavier hick, he, heavier species. I'm not really sure what the heaviest are, but um, I know the oaks are very heavy, and I don't have many of them. But this is just so heavy, I could not lift it up with a skid steer. I had to put it on one end at a time, like this. So I put the end down, and then I can pick the other end on. Um, my skid steer at home is a little bit stronger and I'm sure I can unload it with that one without a problem But this one here I need to do it this way My wagons as you can see are in pretty bad shape this one here needs a complete overhaul I got to replace the stringers and the bunks on this one. On the other one, I just need to replace one bunk. But as you can see also, these are tandem wagons. And because they're tandem wagons, they have such a higher weight capacity, so I can haul a lot of wood with it. So what I've done with them is I actually put on four bunks. And by doing that, I can put, with shorter logs, I can put, quite often I'll put eight footers on the front two bunks and then I will put eights and or ten footers on the back two bunks. So I can get quite a lot of wood on this wagon. It's not at all unusual on good conditions and easy traveling to put on a thousand to twelve hundred board feet. I'm not sure what we're hauling today. It's, it's not anywhere near that much um, today for several reasons. Um, Brenda's helping me today of course and she definitely doesn't need to go out with a big load. Um, there's more troubles when you have a large load. And so we have it, we, we're keeping the load small for her. I am also um, just getting the horses back into shape from several weeks of not working. So it takes a while to get them back into really good shape and I don't wanna pull really big loads until they are in great shape. So we'll keep them small today. So I have a question for everybody today. I was wondering if anyone has ever used hickory much for anything. In, for example, for sleds like in wagons. Um, I am thinking that it might work really good for my bunks. I got out a lot of ash, well not a lot, but I got some ash out that I was actually going to use for my bunks and, and the stringers also. Ash has always been a really good wood for that and that's you know so many people that's that's what they would use the ones that are on this wagon right now and they've been on for quite some time is actually popple and that has actually worked fairly good for me it's very strong um, but I know ash will last longer and but I'm curious what people know about hickory and and what uh, what its uses are what it's good for as far as uses I know it is made for axe handles and such um, but would it work good for bunks on my wagon? If you've got any um, experience with it, I'd love to hear your thoughts.
want you to go ahead of me. Okay, well we're back here at the farm and Jim un unloaded these guys. They're starting to sweat up a little bit. They haven't been working, you know, so much lately, but but they did good and he's gonna unload this this load and we're gonna head down for another load. I got a little chilly on the way home, but I had a few chores I still had to finish, so I went in and did those, and now I'm hot. Three more loads today. Yikes. Okay, we just came out from our coffee break. It's a little bit of a late coffee break, so we got two loads before coffee now, and then it looks like we're only gonna have time for one load after coffee. And even that is questionable because it's really starting to warm up. So, but we'll grab one quick load. But I wanted to show you what I do when I take little breaks like this. When I take little breaks like this, I just, it's, it's warm enough now, they don't really need heavy blankets on. So what I like to do is just, when they're warm, I throw the blankets over their butts. I got a blanket there, and then I just got a light blanket there on these other two. And what that does, I, I was taught that you should keep their, their kidney area warm when they're, when they're hot like this on a cooler days. Tell you the truth, I don't know why. I would love to know why. Um, but an old teamster told me that years ago. And if you guys get any reasons why that would be the case, let me know. But, uh, uh, so that's what I do. I just throw blankets over their butts, up where their kidneys is. And uh, that's how we do. Because I don't want them too hot. These heavy blankets that I have are, are actually too hot on these days when they're hot already. But I don't want them to, to get cold. Uh, so that's what I do. So now, Brenda and I will just head these guys out of here and we'll go get our last load.
So it's getting warm. It doesn't feel that warm, but actually sitting here, I can, the sun is um, starting to come through and it really is making a difference. We are only gonna be able to finish um, three loads today each instead of four because um, of the warming up. As you can see, the puddles are happening. And um, Jim said we would be able to have gotten it all in four loads. Well, that'll just have to be for another day. I was watching him load up this load right here and it, it made me laugh because he put this, you probably can't really see it, but there's this teeny little um, hole here. And I just thought it was funny to see these big logs in this, but you know, it's a, it's a hard hack pole. He must have found it when he was logging and he wanted to have one on hand. That's what he uses for the poles between the horses. So he's bringing it home to have it on hand because it's nice to have uh, spares and to find them, you know, a nice straight pole like that is, uh, you got to take it when you can get it. So uh, it's been going well and uh, we'll, we'll finish up with this one more load today. The other thing that uh, really kind of made me chuckle on the way down here, coming down the road, the, my team, Ken and Lady, walked very slowly, but um, as soon as we got to the trail coming down through the field here, they would um, start to go to a trot. I'm not sure why that was, but they did, they did it every time. Okay, we came back, got back up here with our third load. So it's actually six loads this morning, which is great. And uh, now I'm gonna get these unloaded and I have one more job to do today. Okay, so what I needed to do is uh, deliver some snowboard to a, a customer of mine, and he's five, six miles away. Um, but in this muddy mess here that I have, I need to, um, well, I hope I can pull, I've never tried this before, actually. I'm just gonna pull the double wagon out and around the corn crib because it's such a muddy mess here, I'm afraid the truck could get into trouble. And, uh, but we're having, we had some issues loading up, but. I just gotta make sure I have plenty of straps on. So I'm gonna get a couple more straps on and then we'll try to pull it out around so I can get the pickup hitched up to it. As you can see on our right is my scoop and I've taken the 
runner off it that's busted and trying to decide what I want to do with it, how to fix it. Okay, we did it, no problem. I was actually a little concerned if they'd pull it around the corner all, both wagons, but they took it, no problem. Um, so I will hitch on the truck and take this to my customer and I'll put these guys away for lunch. And uh, so I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.